We've all been there. It's cold season, you're stumbling around the supermarket pharmacy, you've got puffy eyes, snotty nose, a headache that feels like someone's about to burst through your face alien style. You spent the last 10 minutes peering at the shelf, trying to decide which medicines should I buy? You know, should I spend a small fortune on the shiny branded drugs? Or will they make me feel any better than those plain budget options? Well, in a desperate situation, which man flu always is, by the way, you're likely to try anything. But is there really a difference? Thanks to the wonders of modern medicine, we have come a long way from treatments that involve chewing on tree roots or drilling holes into the back of your head. For more than 100 years, pharmaceutical companies have employed scientists to identify specific chemicals for treating all manner of illnesses and disorders, and then to isolate and develop these chemicals into usable medicines. So when you're popping a couple of pills for a sore head, you're actually swallowing a carefully controlled dose of 242-methylpropylphenolpropanoic acid. Imagine trying to pronounce that to the pharmacist. Not likely. It is, however, ibuprofen one of the most common forms of pain relief worldwide. Now, having a friendly name does do away with the horror of the unknown, even though you've actually got no idea what's inside it. But what's in a name? Inventing remedies requires a huge amount of effort. For a new medicine, it can take up to 15 years and around a billion pounds to get it tested and then out onto the shelves. So like with any new invention, the inventors, that's the pharmaceutical companies that have invested all of that time and that money, they take out a patent to protect their new recipe. Now that patent will include the trade name that they want to use. And while it's in place, the original company is the only one that is allowed to make and sell the drug. But patents don't last forever. After a period of usually 20 years, the patent expires and other manufacturers are able to use that recipe to make the drugs themselves. And at this point, the brand name doesn't have to be used anymore. Other companies can market and sell the drug under its generic name. This goes some way to explaining why branded drugs are so much more expensive than their generic counterparts. By charging more for the branded drug, especially in the years that it's the only one on the market, the company that holds the patent can earn back some of the millions of pounds they originally invested to develop it. After the patent expires, the other companies don't have to do the same research and testing. They just have to produce the drugs according to that recipe, so they can make and sell them at a much lower and competitive cost. A case in point is that of sildenafil. This drug started off in the labs of the pharmaceutical giants Pfizer. They were trying to develop a drug that treats angina, and one promising chemical, snappily called UK9248O, had made it as far as the clinical trials. Now, disappointingly for Pfizer, the drug had no effect on patients' chest pains, so it looked like UK9248O was a failure until the testers started reported an unexpected and slightly unnerving side effect, erections. A little bit of testing later and Pfizer were able to market a highly effective drug to treat erectile dysfunction, which they patented as Viagra. Within weeks of Viagra hitting the shelves, it became one of the fastest selling medicines of all time, with up to six tablets being prescribed worldwide every second. Yeah, the sales figure graph really just went up and up and up, yeah. But Pfizer's patent for Viagra ran out in 2013, meaning that the generic versions of the drug could be made and sold under the non-branded name of sildenafil. While this was bad news for Pfizer's commercial prospects, it was great news for patients and doctors because the generic version of exactly the same drug costs less than 30% of the branded version. And that really is the kicker. Generic drugs are exactly the same as the branded versions. Sometimes they're even made in the same factory. They're also both tested to within an inch of their life to make sure that they're safe, consistent, and pure. In fact, Britain's NHS almost always prescribes the generic versions of drugs when they can because these drugs are so much cheaper and they're chemically identical to the branded versions. However, and get this, although there is literally no chemical difference between branded medicines and their budget counterparts, people do in fact feel better after popping the premium pills. And it's all down to the placebo effect, where if we believe a medicine will make us better, then quite simply, it will. 
A study in 2015 gave patients with Parkinson's disease two variations of the same drug, one which cost $100 and another that cost $1,500. Amazingly, the patients showed much more improvement to their motor skills after being given the expensive drug. And the twist in the tail was that none of them had been given any drug at all, both just saline solution with no active ingredients. Such is the power of the placebo effect that the expectation of a more expensive drug being more effective actually made it more effective, even when they weren't taking any drugs at all. So. The next time you drag yourself to the pharmacy, if you want to splash out on the pink glossy packet of liquid capsules, go for it. Or if you want to get the plain package and then spend your savings on ice cream and self-pity, that's great too. You do you, all right? If you enjoyed this video, please do hit like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, share it with your mates. We read all the comments as well, so if you want to say anything about this or if there's any question that you want answering, put it down there. See you soon.